still on national matters, suspended acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Brahim Magu, has been released from police custody. His counsel, Toin Ojamo, Ojalmo confirmed that the suspended EFCC boss is no longer in confinement. Earlier on Wednesday, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, asked Magu to direct his bill application to the presidential panel. Uluwatosin Ojalmo, Magu's legal representative, had asked the IGP to grant bail to his client on self-recognizance after the suspended EFCC chief had spent four days in custody. Joining us now to take a look at this is Bolanle Olugbani, who is a legal practitioner. Good to have you, Barista. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Now, there are reports that Magu is in high spirits and returned at his official residence. Could it be that he may be innocent, if we put it in that way? <laughs> Being in high spirits is not an indication of the panel's report outcome. The constituting authority of the panel, perhaps the Attorney General of the Federation, or indeed the President himself, acting through the Attorney General, will still have to receive a formal report from this constituted panel. That report may be at first confidential and then may be made public. The outcome of the panel report will determine whether the so-called high spirit of uh, Mr. Magu is justified or unjustifiable. Uh, but as a human being who has been in unexpected confinement for five for four days, uh, it's a relief for him. Mm -hmm. All right, his lawyer has also maintained that many reports during the investigation were orchestrated against him. How is that possible? Well, we know that uh, under his tenure, as the EFCC boss, many citizens of this country were tried by media. Salacious accounts of stupendous wealth were made against many citizens of this country. He is no exception. The tables have turned, but he has the presumption of innocence until his guilt is proven by the provisions of the, of the law of this country. So, those allegations may actually appear very stupendous, but may actually amount to nothing. And then the next question will be, he's out of uh, confinement or out of custody, if you like. What is next for him? And should you be in a position to, say, advise him? What would be next? What should he be exploring at this time? Clearly, he's no longer wanted by his benefactors or those who appointed him. He's been used and he's been dumped. He's been given a bad name with the intention to hang a dog. I think the honorable thing for him to do is to perhaps salvage whatever is left of his personal dignity and integrity by resigning and moving on to the next stage of his life. That is, if he's not retired, or dismissed from the Nigeria Police Force. And what does this say about you know our system of leadership? You know the way you put it there, he's been used and dumped. You know how does this relate to uh, having people in positions uh, because they merit it, because they you know they are worth the position? How do we reconcile both? The issue of appointment, generally in Nigeria. It's a discretion. Appointments are not made necessarily on merit. And so if it's a discretion of an appointing authority, for instance, a governor, a president, or a minister, or such other chief executives, one is at the pleasure of the appointing authority. And as such, once that person determines that the purpose for which the appointment was made is no longer being satisfied, and he has the power to hire and fire, he may fire as he deems fit. So you, you enjoy the privilege, which is not a right, and so that privilege may be withdrawn. That is the power of the chief executive in the presidential system of government that we run in Nigeria. Mm. 
Mm. And should Mago's case uh, uh, stand out as a, a lesson, you know, for you know others who are hoping to be appointed or who take up position because uh, the the powers that be put them there? Well, it's a lesson in point, but it's not a new lesson. If you look at the history of all of the chief executives of the EFCC, they've gone out in controversial circumstances. Even the chief justice of Nigeria, the former chief justice of Norway, the appointing authority was the president, and at the material time, when interest conflicted and there were issues, he was eased out in a very inglorious manner. Ditto for ministers, special advisors, commissioners, anybody who is appointed. So anybody who goes into appointed position must be ready to suffer the indignity or pray that he will not be removed uh, in a manner that is uh, contrary to maintaining a human being's dignity. So, I mean, I'm concerned as much as I know many other Nigerians are that, you know, how do we get to a point where our system is such that allows for if you merit a position, you remain a position, in that position. It's not a question of today you are in the good books, tomorrow you are in the black books, if you like. Well, we have to then develop a merit-driven process of appointment. For instance, if you are to be appointed the Minister of Agriculture, you have, an, you have a background in agriculture. As a Minister for Justice, are you a seasoned legal practitioner with relevant experience in administration of the justice sector? Or have you drawn up a position paper as to what you will do if you are appointed to such a position or whatever position? So are you going to also write a written test, you know, set by your appointor? that gives you the impression that your technical experience, your knowledge, and your education is what is being desired, not that the position is being dispensed as a political patronage or a political benefit from the appointor to the appointee. Hmm. Once the basis of appointment is merit-driven and you have a technocrat in place or a politician with technocratic experience, then the, the, there will be reduction in the possibility that people will be used and dumped because you will have round pegs in round holes. Thank you so very much, Barista Bolande, for your thoughts. And do keep safe out there. Thank you.